welcome back to Edgy Reviews. Today, uh, it's blazing hot in Minnesota, and uh, for Minnesota, that's like anything above 75, and everybody's sweating to death. We can't handle heat here. It's the cold, not the heat, that we can handle. Um, you know, I was, I was using this earlier. This is the uh, Cold Steel Bushman, the hole in the handle knife, and this guy's been going on over five years of strictly an abuse knife. This knife just gets beat to death. I usually make it like a machete and use it for knocking down stuff that I don't want to wreck anything else edged and uh, sharpens right back up to fantastic blade. This is like a $20 knife right now. If you need a beater knife um, and you also need a machete and a few other things, this is a great deal. 20 bucks can be a machete, can be a knife. It does all of it very well. It strikes fire steel real good and uh, the steel has held up just fine. It's a, a nice springy steel, very strong, baton with it often. What I'm actually doing though is uh, I have the Mora Cons Bowl, Cans Bowl, wherever you're from, however you say it. Take this out today and uh, should make this focus. There we go. And uh, I wanted to test this grind versus the Enzo Trapper in actual function. And so I'm digging a little wood shovel here today. Help me with planting some stuff. And uh, we're just going to find out what a true Scandi that's a little bit thick versus a very thin uh, partial Scandi and flat grind knife, what the differences are or if there even are any differences. Maybe I won't even perceive that much. And definitely the handle. We're going to figure out some stuff about the handle here. So I just basically I'm going to scoop this out into a, a shovel and then neck down that handle so I can dig holes with it. Don't ask me why, I'm just going to do it. Now I'll just be switching back and forth between the blades as I go. It's nice having that sharp spine on there, but uh, when you are really bearing into it, the fact that it's a little bit thin, it definitely bites into your thumb a little, you know, a little more than uh, your average Mora does because it's such a sharp spine. This one also has a sharp spine, it's a little thicker, and I'd say they're equally sharp spines, but uh, this one being a little thicker gives you a little more real estate on that uh, push cut kind of thing. Tell you one thing, um, I had heard from people, you know, way back that the Enzo Trapper was a great knife, but the handle was too thin or not as comfortable. And it is a little thinner than a lot of bushcraft knives that I've used. And I'm usually really picky with handles. If they're too thin, I think they're garbage. For some reason, this one doesn't bother me that much compared to what I heard from other people. Um, normally, I'm the picky one, but and I have bigger hands. This one doesn't bother me too much. I think it does pretty well. 
It helps that it's really, really sharp. Both are very sharp right now. It helps that it's really, really sharp though because you have less resistance when you're pushing through material. So, whatever that's worth. But I still like the handle better with this, I think. It's it's just the shape, that broom sticky kind of handle. The only wish I have is that instead of the uh, uh, hard plastic polymer material in the middle, I wish that it was just gummy all the way around. It's just far more usable, more preferable for me. The texture that's in there uh, is basically to help this snap into place. Um, in the sheath, there's a little diamond here, which uh, assists in locking in to the sheath. And so I suppose they figured they needed to have at least that much so it could be rigid. A lot of times when I see other people carving, instead of a hammer grip like this, thumbs down, I see them reinforcing like all of their cuts this way. Every cut they make has a supported thumb in the back, it just seems incredibly uncomfortable to me. I wonder if most people just don't understand that putting your thumb down is a little bit more ergonomic and can give you more power in your cut. Uh, actually, rather than doing this, this, I don't know. Everybody's different, not a big deal. I just think it's interesting because it's it terribly uncomfortable to me to consistently have to do that. I only do it for push cuts when I'm removing smaller, tougher pieces of material. Hopefully you can tell both these knives are just shredding into this wood like no problem. Even going against the grain here in a second. Just enough to be a little digging tool so far. I just need to be able to dig in, push the ground to the side, and plant. And this is a softer wood, but I'm not seeing the uh, huge disadvantage I kind of thought I was going to see with that flat grind part. It doesn't carve as well, for sure, on smaller tasks. It doesn't dig in as well with that secondary bubble that it has. But it seems like in just general purpose work, things like this, things that I would end up doing in the woods. Man, this isn't doing too bad. This is roughly a $35 knife. That's just the median. You'll find it between 30 and 40 bucks. Call me a $35 knife. Roughly a, a $35 knife versus a $110 knife if you find it on sale, uh, probably like 105 bucks. And not a huge difference but let's work with it a while here and we'll just look at the edges real quick and see if uh, one is greater than the other. So I honestly don't know. Again, the push cuts, I definitely prefer the uh, thicker stock of this knife. It's just easier on your hands. It's always frustrating when people make YouTube videos, and you can tell their guys who they work with wood for like the 15 minutes of the video, but otherwise they just mess around. They're never really too serious about using tools. And they come away with like some tops that has that terrible handle material like that rocky mountain tread or something and they're like oh yeah it doesn't really bother your hand that much let alone they're they're wearing gloves like really thick gloves and uh you know they wouldn't dare do it barehanded because it just tears up your hands it's not ergonomic you can be assured that i, I work with wood kind of all day long 
all, all the time. In my free time, I mess around with wood all the time. And so these knives actually do get used every single day. Also part of my philosophy of don't own more than you need. Use the things you have, use them often. If you own too much, it's not gonna make you happy. It really, because it's thin, it really doesn't have too much of a trouble slipping into the wood. The initial bite is not the same, but you kind of force it and it slips in the wood because it's, it's a pretty thin tang, or a pretty thin stalk, I should say. All right, I'm gonna work with this a while longer. We'll finish up my little trowel thing going on here, and then I'll come back and give you some current thoughts. Not final thoughts, but some current thoughts on uh, the Mora Cans Bowl versus the Enzo Trapper. All right, so here's my little digging stick, and uh, nothing too special, as you can tell. <clears throat> but all I really needed was something that could poke in the ground and I could drop some seeds in. Um, what I found was the handle on the Mora Cans Bowl, um, I think it's better for me than the um, Enzo Trapper here. I think it's better. Uh, overall, just utility tasks, hard to use, carving, I think the handle just is a little better. The bite of the Enzo Trapper and carving capability in general is definitely better here. It's that true Scandi, and uh, no doubt about it to me, hands down, a better carver. But not all of, uh, you know, um, material removal and stuff like that is going to be just carving. Sometimes you're batoning, sometimes you're doing some really hard cuts. Um, and I think this knife, if I had just used this knife and made this, my hands would feel the same as if I used just my carver. I think I could have got it done a little bit faster with just the Enzo because of that initial bite, but this slips through material pretty well and overall I'm, I'm really happy with the performance of this knife. Let's check out the sharpness now. So neither of these knives have been sharpened. It's not shaving sharp except for on the tip. Towards the, the tip where I have not done as much push cut. Still shaving sharp towards the tip. And the Enzo Trapper. See, I don't have a lot of hair left on my arm here. Oh yeah. So just barely shaving sharp, I'd say, at this point in the main portion of where the work gets done. And then towards the, the tip here and the belly area, definitely still shaving sharp. No problem. So this is M2 steel, and the uh, Mora here is that, uh, it's the stainless, but I think it's like the 14 CR or 12 CR, probably the 12 CR um, stainless. The advantage for length goes to the Mora just slightly. The thickness is to the Enzo. The handle is bigger with the Mora than it is with the Enzo. The Enzo is definitely a, a aesthetically a fantastic blade. I don't think the Mora is too bad. Actually, for a Mora knife, this has definitely got some traditional lines going to it. And I don't mind that flat portion as much as I thought I would. I had some real doubts about using this uh, when I first got it because I wasn't real impressed with the edge compared to other Moras I had. Um, but I'm starting to understand it a little better, understand its function. And that handle makes up for a lot, I'll tell you what. When I put my own edge on it um, here in probably a couple weeks, I'm gonna let it dull out quite a bit. Uh, I think I'm gonna like it even more. It's pretty good. I really like this little flare towards the end. It could be a hair bigger in my opinion. I don't need it to neck down 
if you know what the Coke bottle design is for handles, that's my preferred design would be a Coke bottle, but most of the knives with those Coke bottle handles are three or $400, so I'm sticking with this. But I choke up, I get real close to that blade and this little notch here is bigger than on my other Moras. So it's a nice locking end point, um, very grippy, but not abusive to my hands. Doesn't give me hot spots, which is really important. This handle, um, I would say it, it doesn't really give me hot spots, actually. Um, it's just not as comfortable in general. That's all I really have to say about that. This definitely has a more puncturing tip to it. You can definitely punch into stuff better than with this one. This one's got more of a leafy shape design to it, a little broader tip. Um, I don't know what else to even really say. I, I, I think these knives' purposes are a little different, but this trapper is $110 and it comes with a leather sheath. And the leather sheath with a dangler, I've already shown that in other videos, uh, it's not my preferred method at all of carrying a knife. Uh, leather is, is cool and it can be fancy and, and it's the only leather sheath I have left. Everything else has been kydexed. And this polymer kydex looking stuff that Moore has been using, I always put a night ice carabiner on there. Um, it's covered in multicam right now just to wrap to keep the fire steel in, but this carrying material is far superior. Nice drainage hole at the bottom. Um, that knife doesn't even touch the sheath and so it's really easy to wash that one out. With a leather, I have to wipe my knife off every time. They're both stainless steel, so I can use them for food prep and gutting animals and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I don't know, even this wood can be stained by blood and disfigured, you know? This is always gonna be the same. So if you care about that kind of thing, I kind of don't, but if you do care about that kind of thing, this more is looking like a really, really great option right now if you need a knife. If you don't need a knife probably stick with what you have but some good options here for newbies to the market edgy reviews